Welcome to the Financial Freedom Secrets Show. This is your host, Jackson Milan, the Wealth Mentor, helping business owners create financial freedom faster by mastering the language of money. Want to see how well you're tracking towards financial freedom? Complete our 40-point financial performance scorecard at wealthhealthcheck.com.au. That's wealthhealthcheck.com.au. The average score for most business owners is 18 out of 40. So complete the scorecard now and see how well you're tracking towards financial freedom. G'day, guys. This is Jack Smilan, the Wealth Mentor, and we're here for another episode of Financial Freedom Secrets. And today, we'll be going into some uncharted territory, but it is a space that I'm super passionate about, and I believe it's a hidden gem for most service-based business owners who are looking to streamline and super pace their trajectory towards financial freedom. And I'm joined here today by Shay Wheat, all the way from the US of A, uh, who is an absolute events expert. And we're hopefully going to unpack some of her genius around how you can start leveraging events to be able to grow and scale your business, make more money, so then you can build more wealth. So Shay, thanks for joining us. How are you doing? I'm doing phenomenal. Thank you for having me. Thanks for joining us. So uh, where about are you in the US exactly? Yeah, I'm just north of San Francisco in California. Beautiful. Fantastic. I'm sure the weather is really nice at the moment. You're enjoying some cool summer breezes. It's going to be great. Uh, beautiful. Well, which is great because it was like crazy warm. It was like in the hundreds here last week. So wow. I'm so thankful that it's not right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, here in Australia, down under, we're heading into winter. However, I'm in the tropics, so it is a little bit warmer. Uh, I complain it gets cold and all of my team whinge at me saying that I'm uh, a little bit soft uh, since being in the tropics, but that's all right. I'll take it. So Shay, thanks for joining us. Let's do a little bit of a background. For those of uh, who's listening and watching who don't know you, tell us a little bit about you and your story. Yeah, absolutely. So if you don't know kind of Grace and Ease Productions, we support our clients in creating powerful and profitable events. So we will produce in-person and virtual live events from 50 people in our one-day events to over 4,000 people in our three-day events. And these are really known as like sales and enrollment events where our clients are making $2.1 million in their one three-day virtual live event. So we handle all the planning, all the speaker support, sponsor support, production for all of these events, creating really experiential, revenue-generating, exciting events. But of course, it wasn't always that way, right? <laughs> that's the thing. It's like, where were you in the beginning? I think that's kind of where your question was, right, Jackson? <laughs> yeah, the origin story. Tell us about it. Origin story. Yeah. So it really got started when I was actually speaking on somebody else's stage. And I was just messing around with the guy who had my microphone because it was like multi-speaker. So I'm like, hey, dude, don't go spitting on my mic. And he's like, you're funny. Who are you? Because I wasn't really anybody, right? And turns out he was like the head of education for Dr. Oz's nonprofit. I'm like, oh, that's so cool. I just met Dr. Oz's sister at Maria Shriver's women's conference, which is a big, huge conference that had like 14,000 tickets sold out in 14 minutes. Wow. Yeah. And so I volunteered, I was on their event team, I was doing behind the scenes. And he was like, wait, wait, hold on. She's best friends with our CEO. And we're doing a women's conference, you should help us. And so I went, okay. <laughs> so that's really kind of how I got started. I was in charge of over 70 speakers and over 100 volunteers. Wow. That's a big event. It's a little bit scary, a little bit intimidating for most people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and what I kind of learned out of it was like, oh, I kind of have a knack for this. Like I've always loved attending events. I was always a part of events. I just, if I really think about it as a kid, I was always the one that was like, come over, we're going to do a pool party and then we're going to do pizza and then we're going to do movie night and then we're going to do this. You know, I was like always kind of planning things. But now I get to do it as a profession. That's fantastic. I love it. 
We've run our own events. I must say it is super stressful and we've kind of learned through the school of hard knocks of uh, <laughs> what not to do and kind of iterated and improved as we progressed. I remember I, I spent so much time and effort trying to organize my first event and like three people turned up. And we ended up signing them all as clients, which was fantastic. But mm-hmm. when you're expecting to have a room packed full of people and you're kind of like vibing off that energy and there's just three people just like eagerly staring at you, you've kind of <laughs> got to pretend a little bit that everything is okay inside, but it does damage the ego. But let's talk a little bit about these events because that's a stark contrast, right? Like 4,000 people at a three-day event compared to my measly little event with three people that turned up, some tumbleweeds uh, rolling through the room. Let's talk a little bit about the power of events and why service-based business owners and experts should really be considering leveraging events to grow their business. Yes. So really, events are the fastest way for people to know, like, and trust you. Now, why is that? It's because they really get into this emotional state and they have a highly experiential bond with you. So it's not just over the phone. It's not simply a talking head like in a webinar. This is dramatically different when you are either in person or you're virtually live on your own virtual live stage, right? We are engaging with the audience. And that's why the businesses that are doing events are the ones that are making multiple six figures. Now, you know, it isn't hard when it's done right, right? It's like when you have the systems in place, when you have the structure, when you have the knowledge, right? You know a lot more from where you were and when you started to when you're doing your events now. When you have that knowledge backing you, supporting you, then you have the crazy, awesome paydays. You know, I had a client that ended up making $882,000 in her very first two-day live event. Nearly a million dollars in two days. Wow. And now she's off and running and she's playing in the big leagues. But that's because she had support that had the knowledge. She knew yes. she didn't have the knowledge. So she's like, I'm going to have somebody else who has the knowledge implement everything for me. And then she could just shine on stage, do what she does best, connect with the audience, get them crazy awesome results, and then support the ones that are moving forward next steps with them. Phenomenal. And look, that's the ideal outcome, right? And it seems so daunting because it's all about that pre-planning and having a really good project plan and making sure that we cover off all of the stages. So Shane, your experience, what are the kind of key contributing factors to having a killer event and having people show up so it doesn't turn into a a ghost town? Yes. Okay, so people show up to events for certain reasons. They're either coming for the networking, they're coming for the education, they're coming for inspiration, they're coming for recognition, right? Or they're coming for like the marketing and the sponsorship in order to connect with their ideal audience. So fantastic. If they're coming, a lot of them, probably your audience is probably thinking about the education piece is teaching them something. Your audience is in some type of pain and you know the system and the structure to move them through that pain. And probably I will bet money on it that what your audience feels is their pain and why they're coming to you is probably really not what their pain is. And you know that, right? So you have to take them through the steps. And when you end up running and producing an event and hosting an event, you can take them through this arc. You can create a run of show that allows them to experience things with you, that allows them to come and network with other like-minded individuals, that allows them to have community. Right now, that's what everybody needs is the community. Yes. And that's what allows people to stay with you for the day or three days is they really want to be enveloped in this cocoon. And then we also know that a percentage of these people want to move forward with you and stay in that cocoon. So there's a few key pieces that we actually put into our run of show to make it so people actually stay and stick with you for three days. Yeah, it's super important because I think learning is difficult, right? And it's easy to to say, I'm too busy or I don't have the time or I've got too much on my plate or I'm too stressed. 
and it's leveraging that community and a kind of appealing to those things. I think I, I was always said people come for the education and they stay for the community. And um, so creating that environment where they're just kind of like, like, hey, this is my people. This is what I've been looking for. Keeping them excited is ultimately what we want to do by the sounds of it. Mm-hmm. I expect there's some sort of cadence or some sort of process to mm-hmm. take people through this arc because it doesn't just happen by accident, right? Right. Yeah. No, there. <laughs> my life is like full of systems. <laughs> love it. That's what we and- love for you. <laughs> and so it's, yeah, there is that arc. There is that, I kind of like looking at it kind of like a movie. So in a movie, you're watching the person go through that hero's journey. The thing with events is your audience is going through that hero's journey. And so you create and craft and design the event to allow them to kind of do that ebb and flow, to do that arc, so to speak that allows them to go, oh, I get it. I understand. I'm coming into it. I'm experiencing this piece. I have a 30,000 foot view of what it is I'm supposed to do next. And I know that you can take me there quicker, faster, and probably with way more support than if I were to do it on my own. Beautiful. Fantastic. Yeah. And I think that's important. We've got to create and illustrate that gap. And I particularly found that in what we do, we talk about wealth, we talk about finance. These are big concepts and people may be experiencing pain, but it's most people just say, hey, this is not an our thing. I've got all these other problems that are typically superficial that I'm going to slap a bandaid over. And for that reason, that's why events work so well for us is because when I can get in front of somebody for whether it's 90 minutes or whether it's a full day or whether it's three days, yeah. I can immerse them in this where they end up saying, hey, wow, this is actually what I need. Yeah. And it's kind of like that old thing of like people think they know what they need, but what they really need is something a lot deeper. So being able to kind of get them to marinate in that a little bit. Yeah, is what's going to get them those long-term results, which is why events are so powerful. So what you're saying is perfect. It makes so much sense. Where do you think are the biggest mistakes that people make? Punters like me who decide to go out and do all of this stuff for themselves, where does this go astray and where do people have these events that maybe don't live up to their expectations or fall short? Yeah, biggest mistakes is doing the wrong event at the wrong time based on where you're at in your business. So there's like 17 different types of events that I've like sat down and gone, okay, 90 minute workshops and summits and retreats and masterminds and one days and three days. And right. There's like a whole bunch of them that you can be doing in your business. But if you're doing the wrong event at the wrong time, it will actually hurt your business. Okay. Yeah. So based on the phase that you're in, you should be focusing on certain events. So if you're just starting out, you're somebody that's like needing to validate what it is you're doing, validating your offer, doing your market research, making sure that you can actually get clients, that they will buy what it is you're offering, get them crazy awesome results. No events at that time. When you move into phase two is when you're really starting to get visibility. You're using the free platforms, the Facebook lives, the clubhouse rooms, the Instagrams, going on people's podcasts, doing webinars, doing summits, other people's, right? They're building the stages. You're bringing in the visibility. You're increasing the awareness of your brand. You're starting to earn more money. So now you can move into phase three where you're going to increase what it is you're doing and create your own stages, hosting your own masterclasses, your webinars, your summits, right? To move into four when you're actually going to be hosting your one day events, your retreats, your workshops, And then phase five is when you're, you know, really leveraging being just in your zone of genius and doing more like a three day event. What I've seen happen is people go, I want to have a thousand person event. And I'm like, fantastic. Tell me a little bit about what is your list look like? What is your offer? What are you supporting them with? How, you know, all of these questions and they go, oh, I've never sold that before. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait, wait, hold on. We don't even know if you have proof of concept yet. Don't be doing a thousand person event. You're wasting your money, right? So we want to make sure that we're building upon it properly and utilizing your wealth so that it builds upon itself, right? And that's what I want people to really acknowledge is you use events as a part of your business strategy. Makes perfect sense. And this is so common, like whether it be, 
in kind of like marketing and acquisition strategies like events or whether it be about wealth, finance, creating financial freedom. I find that entrepreneurs just kind of get ahead of themselves. They try and like run before they can walk and they're trying to play catch up. And I think it really comes from the fact that people feel like they're fallen behind and they need to get to their destination faster in order to, I don't know, catch up for lost time and missed opportunities. But this is a marathon, not a sprint. Yes. And yeah, you're not going to go and put on a thousand or a four thousand person event your first go around, right? The types of people that are pulling those crowds have big brand presence. They've got huge lists. Yeah. They've got partnerships and uh, and JVs that are plugging them. And it takes time. And I think the interesting part here, Trey, is that we found in our experience that the smaller events, the more intimate events, are often more powerful. Because you can have that personal connection with people and you can actually have a higher conversion rate in the room. So uh, it's about making sure you're doing it for the right reasons. Do it for the results, not for the ego. Um, (laughs) I think that that's super important, which is great. I agree with you wholeheartedly. And, And like you were saying, small events can be extremely profitable and get them crazy awesome results really fast. Yes. So for example, let's say we're doing a one day event. And let's say you want to offer a $147 ticket and your goal is to have 50 people in the room, okay? So one of the key pieces, and this is another thing that I see people don't look at is how they actually track how they're filling the room, right? So we do something that's called a ticket map. And when we do a ticket map, we go through and say, what are all the different ways that you actually plan on filling your event? How many people are going to be at that speaking gig or at that webinar that you're doing or the JV partner, whatever? How many people are going to convert to get a ticket? And then that adds up all the tickets. So we do that in order to figure out how we're actually going to get 50 people to buy a ticket. And once we do that, we also know that not everybody shows up as you experienced, right? (laughs) Sadly, not everybody shows up even when they pay $147. Yeah. So we oversell. So in our example here, if we're going to do our goal of 50 people, we're going to sell 66 tickets at $147. Okay, if we're just doing some math. That means before the event starts, you've already brought in $9,700. Okay. Now, during your one day event, you get them results, you show them how to do X, Y, and Z, you give them all the good stuff right? Because whether or not they do business with you or not, you still have an event promise. And I work with every single one of my clients on this, that they walk away with value. Whether they do business with you or not, they are walking away with value that they can actually implement right then and there. That's kind of a must to work with us. Not kind of, it is. (laughs) So, but we do know, like I was saying earlier, that a percentage of people are going to want to move forward. They're like, please, I need you to help me do this, hold me accountable because I've been trying to do it on my own for years and it's not working. I need your help. So let's just say for our example here, you have a low ticket offer of $4,500 for your pay in full program. Okay. Assuming we have about a 20% conversion rate. Now on our smaller events, we tend to have a bit of a higher conversion rate than some of our larger events because you can get really intimate with them. You can do more hot seats. You can do more experiential stuff. They can like really feel what's going on and the community is really tight knit. So we expect a higher conversion rate. So we'll go with a generous 20%. I would say that's probably pretty average. I've seen up to 50% in really small rooms, but we'll just say 20% of the 50 people because we expect 16 not showing. That means we have 10 people that said yes to your offer. At $4,500, you just made $45K plus your ticket revenue. That means in your one day event, you've made over $54,000. Beautiful. Not too shabby for 50 people in the room. Not bad. Fantastic. And that's the numbers, like the power of the numbers and knowing the math. Yeah. So for an event like that, I guess the big part of here is making sure that people put enough money aside because events can be expensive and there's obviously pros and cons for in-person 
versus virtual. Uh, and yep. I do feel that people are wanting to get back into a room. They want to have that human to human connection. People are zoomed to death. Let's face it. <laughs> COVID has, has definitely had us spending too much time uh, in front of our webcams with our beautiful kind of selfie uh, lights that illuminate our bright faces. Yes. And I know that I'm chewing at the bit to get back to live events. Mm-hmm. So is there a ballpark in terms of a budget? Maybe is it per head or is it kind of a a bit of a range that business owners should be considering to put on a really good event? Yeah, eh, there's a lot of questions. So, you know, one, are you doing it in the States? Are you doing it in Australia? Are you doing it someplace else? Are you doing it virtual? Are you doing a virtual in your home? Are you creating a studio in your home? Are you going to a hotel room and creating a studio there? Are you going to a hotel room and having the event there, right? Like there's a ton of different questions that come into play. So on the less expensive side would be creating a studio in your home. We did this with one of our clients in the Bahamas where she ended up, she uses it also for her keynotes and things. So she wanted probably a bit more than most of you would actually need for a studio, but we had TVs in front of her to see the Zoomies. We had TVs on the ground. So I could have my notes to her. She could see the run of show. She could see the program feed of what the audience actually sees. She could see the chat. Like she could see all of these things and be standing and be moving around and having like that engagement. And it was really nice when you craft a virtual live event correctly. And remember I was telling you that arc, when you do it properly, People go, oh my God, we're already at the end of day one. I didn't even realize I've been here for eight hours. Because we have movement, because we have multiple sets, because we have different camera angles, because we keep it moving like a movie, they're engaged and you're you're able to sit there for eight hours and really dive into what's happening, okay? So it's a little hard for me to say what budgets could be. You could go on the low end and spend a couple of thousand dollars on equipment and then a couple of thousand dollars for event production support and AV support. And then on the very, very high end, you can be spending 75K, 100K on event production and swag and hotels and food and beverage and all of those details. So it's a range depending on what is it that you're looking to accomplish and what's happening on the back end. Now, something I do want to kind of preface for everybody who is looking to go back to in-person, because we've been virtual, everybody is either one expecting a virtual option, which then makes it a potential hybrid event. And when you do hybrid events, that's two events, okay? That's two teams. That's a larger budget. And that's also you as the event host having to split your brain and talking to two different groups, okay? Unless you're super well-seasoned and you do this nonstop for a living, I would recommend you do one or the other. Do an in-person or do a virtual, okay? Also with an in-person is people are forgetting how much it costs to attend an in-person event. You travel. You need the flight, you need the hotel, you need the food, you need to take the days off to get there. So now you're spending a week with somebody instead of just three days with somebody. So what we've seen is people are like, oh yeah, I'm in, I'm totally going to come to this event in person. And then a couple of days before are like, yeah, um, I'm actually not going to come anymore. And so you need to be aware of What is your food and beverage minimum? What is your attrition rate for the hotel room block? And make sure that you have somebody like myself negotiate a contract for you to put safeguards in it for those circumstances that will come up. Yes, super important. Yeah, I've seen so many people lose a lot of money 
because of obviously when we're in the depth of COVID, people are still trying to run events thinking that, oh, we're out of lockdown, everything's fine. And then all of a sudden back in lockdown again, everything gets called off uh, and things have been super conservative here in Australia in terms of lockdowns and restrictions. So it's super nerve wracking. And I think what's really interesting here is that people's behaviors have like fundamentally changed when it comes to how they consume content these days. And I, I even know it myself, like you were just saying this and I've done this myself, I had all the best intentions to go to an event and it gets like the week of and I'm like I've got all this stuff to organize uh, it's too hard I'm just gonna stay home <laughs> I'll catch the next one exactly yeah. so well, I think that's super important fantastic well this is super valuable Shay I think this really gives people a really deep insight around how to go about this how to do it the right way and make sure that they can kind of buffer against those risks so if you had to summarize your kind of top three pieces of advice for budding entrepreneurs who are looking to implement these event strategies to grow and scale their business? What would be your top three gold nuggets? Yeah, I would definitely say, make sure you're aware of what phase of events you're in, what phase of business you're in. So you're doing the correct event during the correct phase. So you don't lose your shirt. And then once you realize that work the phase to move through the phases quickly. And then from there, you want to make sure that you are really staying in your zone of genius, right? Your job is to connect with the audience. Your job is to fill the room. Your job is to get them crazy awesome results. Your job is not to be paying attention to, is this getting done? What is supposed to be happening? Is the food and beverage, you know, lunch ready? Is the team ready to drop the link into the chat? Is the dashboard set up the way it's supposed to? Are my coaches where they're supposed to, like, your job is to focus on the audience and make sure that you have support for everything else so that you stay in your zone of genius. Beautiful. You make it sound so easy, which is uh, which is great. That's what we want. So Shay, if somebody's listening to this or watching this and they want your help, uh, how do you work with people and what does that look like? Yeah, absolutely. So they can definitely connect with us on all the social medias. Our website is graceandeaseproductions.com. You can also find us on social media that way as well. If they are interested in figuring out what phase of event leverage they're in, I do have a free gift for everybody. So if they were to go to fivephases.info, and that's spelling out the word five, F-I-V-E, phases.info forward slash journey. I've put together this little kind of flow chart and we can go, okay, this is, I'm in this phase and this is how I moved on to the next phases. That would be one of your first steps. And if you're somebody that's like, Shay, I'm in phase five, I've been doing events. I've got team. I know that we're tired of doing events because my customer service should not be doing this. My, you know, sales manager should not be doing this. They should not be the project manager of our event. I just need you to tell me what I need to do. Then jump on my calendar at eventsarepowerful.com. And I'm happy to take a look at what you've got going on and let you know your next best step. Amazing. Perfect. We'll include all those links in the show notes, guys. Um, this has been fantastic. I'm going to go get uh, those five phases myself so I can work out exactly where we are. Um, Shay, I really appreciate you making the time. This has been super valuable. And uh, guys, make sure that you jump on this stuff. I can't speak high enough of events in this current day and age to cut through the noise and compel people to take action and create urgency. And it's one of the best ways for you to grow your business and to create financial freedom. Uh, so make sure you start implementing. Shay, I appreciate you making the time and uh, we'll catch you again soon. Thank you. Appreciate you.